Bosnian Phoenix uh, deals with the history of the Bosnian region and its surroundings from about 1000 BC until the early 1500s when Bosnia was finally conquered by the Turks. Bosnia Herzegovina before that had an independent existence as a kingdom which was a very powerful and important kingdom in European affairs. It's located, Bosnia is located in Southeast uh, Europe in the middle of the former Yugoslavia. On one side is Serbia, on the other side is Croatia. And uh, it was, uh, it developed uh, through the mixture of different ethnic groups and religious groups through over 2,000 years. Uh, the first group uh, that was there were the Illyrians. The Illyrians had a sophisticated civilization and their main center was in what's now Bosnia and Herzegovina, though they were also in other areas like in Albania. The book uh, is named Bosnian Phoenix because of the history of the region. History of the region is that even though that area, the Bosnian region, was conquered over and over again, after a while it would always rise again like a phoenix from the ashes of the previous conquest. One example was the Illyrians who were conquered and then they rose again to become the dominant people in the Roman Empire. Later on, the Bosnians were conquered by others, like, for example, they were conquered by Croatia for a while. And still, they rose again and became an independent nation, independent people. And they were conquered by the Serbs for a while, and they rose again to become uh, independent. Uh, they were conquered by the Bogos, and they, again, they rose again. So there's a tendency to rise again, over and over again, uh, regardless of how many times they go down, they always come back up in all the 2,000 year history, more than 2,000 year history of the region. Number one, because it deals with a region which has had a huge influence and effect on the history of Europe and consequently the rest of the world. To understand the present and be able to uh, go forward to a better future, we have to know the history, okay? And the other books about Bosnia do not explain the relationship between what happened there and various historical trends. And Bosnia was involved in so many historical trends uh, that affected the world. One of them was uh, the Bogomil religion. The Bogomil religion, which became headquartered in Bosnia, where there was an actual Bogomil bishop and pope, sometimes called, uh, spread throughout much of Western Europe. And it was an early kind of Protestant religion, Protestantism, which became very popular in France, very popular in Italy and parts of Germany and other areas. And the, it laid the foundation for the later development of Protestantism uh, because the many of the ideas of Bogomilism were essentially the same as the concepts of Protestantism that were developed later uh, by Martin Luther. Martin Luther came only a uh, few decades after Bosnia fell to the Turks. Uh, he was born about the late 16th, the late 15th century, and uh, it wasn't much, uh, much later than Bosnia fell. So to understand uh, these historical trends, and what happened there, we have to know uh, more in detail how what happened in Bosnia is related to what happened in the rest of the world. What I include in my book is the relevance of what happened in Bosnia to the rest of Europe.
The Bosnians resisted the Turks for about a century and defeated them repeatedly. The Turks planned to conquer all of Western Europe. In the early and middle part of the 14th century, the Turks were by far the most powerful country in the world. And they might have been able to conquer all of Western Europe in the middle of the 14th century and late 14th century. Uh, because Europe was very weak. Western Europe was extremely weak. It was divided. There was the wars between England and France, the Hundred Years' War. There was civil wars in England, civil wars in France, in other areas. Uh, and the fact that the, the Bosnians, together with their allies, uh, who were the Serbs, they were main allies, uh, managed to hold back the Ottoman Turkish side allowed Europe to become stronger, to become modernized, and to be able to finally defeat the Turks in, uh, around Vienna and other areas, Battle of Lepanto in the 16th century, because they were weakened by constant defeats in Bosnia. They lost many, many thousands, tens of thousands of troops fighting against the Bosnians. The other books do not explain how the Bosnian resistance to the Turks l led to the ability of Western Europe to become strong and be able to defeat the Turks finally before they conquered all of Europe. The Turkish sultans uh, boasted, some of them boasted that they wished to conquer all of Western Europe and feed their horses on the altar of St. Peter's Cathedral. Okay. The other books do not mention uh, much at all about the numerous uh, battles and wars that the Bosnians had against the Turks and managed to hold them back and defeated them again and again and again about it. The degree of this effort, which lasted close to a century, is really monumental and uh, essentially allowed Western Europe to survive at this time. Another major aspect of the book, which is not covered anywhere else, is the relationship between the Bosnians, the Serbs, and the Croats at that time. Since the Balkan Wars of the 1990s, uh, people just say, oh, okay, these people, the Bosnians, Serbs, Croats, they're always killing each other and so on. Uh, but no one really went in detail, as I do, explaining how that is not true, how for the most part of the Middle Ages, the three groups were very close together in a brotherly union. The Bosnian King Tvrko was accepted as King of the Serbs as well. In fact, he was crowned as King of the Serbs by the Orthodox Patriarch of Mileševo Monastery, which is in Serbia. And uh, in addition, he was accepted as King of the Croats. So there was the formation of a three-party kingdom led by the Bosnian king, and that remained for some while after that king died uh, in a close brotherly relationship. Uh, the king of Ser Serbia was King Tvrko, who was the king of Bosnia and the king of Croatia. The unity that existed in those times when they fought together is something which almost no one ever mentions. And I went to original sources, including medieval documents, numerous medieval documents, to find details of this unity, which was extremely popular in those days. There was the hope to form a new kingdom of the South Slavs, led, in this case, by Tvrko, king of Bosnia, who was also king of Serbia, and king of Croatia. He was king of Serbia because he was descended from the Nemanja Serbian dynasty, great grandson of King Dragutin, and king of Croatia because he was uh, also descended from the leading noble houses of Croatia. So we have within one person and one family a unity that was very powerful. In fact, uh, based on this, again, my book shows something which is almost never really mentioned. Uh, the Serbian Kosovo period, the Battle of Kosovo, 
according to the Serbian tradition, uh, it was something where the Serbs fought alone against the Turks and they lost and came under Turkish rule. And I show in my book that it's not accurate. And this is, again, something which other books that came out about Bosnia and within the last 20 odd years do not show and state at all. The Battle of Kosovo was in reality a victory by United Serbian and Bosnian forces against the Turks. It was a victory against the Turks. It was not a defeat, as the legend says. So we have here, uh, again, another tradition which, due to inadequate knowledge of history, led to uh, people hating each other because of uh, the wrong conceptions about history. But if we realize that in actuality they were together, in fact, after the Battle of Kosovo, during the Battle of Kosovo, uh, the Sultan of the Turks was killed by a Serbian nobleman, and the Turkish army retreated, retreated to Turkish territory. Uh, Turkish armies do not retreat if they win a victory. They move forward. They retreated. And in those days, we have actually evidence that the European countries r recognize this as a great success for the Christian forces and uh, were celebrating. In Paris, according to uh, ancient chronicles, in Paris itself, in Notre Dame Cathedral, the king led the whole court in a celebration of the victory at Kosovo, the victory at Kosovo, because they knew in France itself that if the Turks had won, they would have moved forward and they were aiming to go to France as well as all of Europe. All of Europe was the target of the Turkish Empire, but the Battle of Kosovo stopped them and later on, other battles stopped them. But this is a major battle which is very important to show the brotherhood, number one, of Serbs and Bosnians, who were like one people in many ways, and Croats who joined them. And second, of the significance of the Bosnian participation in the war, in wars, I should say, in the wars against the Turks. All the wars against the Turks for almost 100 years the predominant fighters were Bosnian. Uh, one of the main points of the book is to uh, oppose the myth that has been stated that all the peoples of the region, including the Croats, the Serbs, the Bosnian, or different religions, including Bogomils, the Orthodox, and the Catholics, hated each other always. They were always fighting at each other's throats. The fact is that they did not always hate each other. In much of the 14th century and 15th century, they were extremely close. And they were united by one king, King Twitko, and later on by his descendants, his successors, into one, basically one confederation of people who were on brotherly terms with each other. In fact, uh, we have evidence that Lazar, Prince Lazar, is Lazar of the Serbs, in actuality, came with his troops to Bosnia to fight on the side of King Turko and support him. And Turko sent troops to Serbia to support Lazar. And according to some uh, original documents that I found, there were as many as 20,000 Bosnian troops fighting in the Battle of Kosovo together, shoulder to shoulder, with the Serbs. So the unity that existed at that time was amazing and should be remembered as something that can come about again with proper understanding of the past. We can have a better future for all those people involved.